Hello again. So this week we are going to continue studying Opnet. Uh, we need to understand some basic uh, things about Opnet. And in order to make a better use of Opnet, I would like to show you first a problem and a mathematical model that is not going to be that complicated. But we need to do that to understand uh, how Opnet is able to simulate processes that uh, happen on a network. For instance, uh, the continuous sending of emails from a workstation to a server, or the other applications that we are familiar with, like browsing or a, uh, using FTP and things like that. So let's get started here. On the screen you have one example of a very simple network. Say, for instance, you are working on workstation A, and through a series of switches, you have a network here that connects you with a server. And all we want to understand is how can Opnet simulate uh, emails leaving A going to the server. That's all. And for that, we are going to introduce a mathematical concept uh, that is called, I'm sorry. Uh, a point process. But also, we need to uh, introduce a, ran a random variable as well. And the question is, how can we simulate a workstation that sends traffic? A workstation sending traffic. Well, this, the workstation is going to send traffic, and we are going to uh, represent that traffic on a timeline. So, suppose the first horizontal line represents time, and what you see here is a series of arrows pointing at specific points on the timeline. And these are the times when emails are actually being sent from A, and hopefully they will arrive to the server. And that's the job of the network. But A is concerned with sending those emails, and they will be sent at certain times. Let's call the first time T0. T1 is the next one. T2 is the next one. So at this, specific, at this specific time, an email is being sent. And all we care is when the email is being sent. So far, that's all we care. Now, B is another person working on another workstation, like you see it here. And for B, life is different, but that person is also interested in sending emails. And life is different because this is a different person whose needs are different. So at other times, B is sending emails as well. So what's happening at the server? Well, the server has its own timeline, and the server is, go is going to see how emails are going to arrive with a little bit of a delay, which is what this T0 plus delta is telling me. A, a bit later, SE is going to see that email coming from A, and you can see also the shift all over here, except perhaps on this one that was sent at T2 by A that never arrived for some reason. Things happen on a network. So any of these processes happen either uh, on A's timeline or B's timeline or at the server. They are known as point processes. Okay, now we are interested in the amount of time that happens between two consecutive points in a point process. So the point process is understood, hopefully, so far. And now we have uh, a series of amounts here, A1, A2, A3, A4, they correspond to the time that happens that goes by between one sending of an email and the next one. A2 would be the time that goes on between the second email and the third one and so on. And the same can be done for B. So you have a series of numbers, A1, A2, A3, A4, or B1, B2, B3, which are going to be called each of those A's, like A1, is a random variable. Why is it that we, we call it a random variable? Well, we don't really know when we are standing here at the beginning when the next email is going to be sent out. So A1 is uncertain, but there are ways to model uncertainty, and we know probability is one of those ways. So each of these numbers will be modeled as random variables and known quantities that we can 
more or less guess and we can form some beliefs about what are the most likely values to happen uh, and we'll see that in a second so a1 a2 a3 etc etc is a family of independent and identically distributed random variables independence is important and that's one of the assumptions of uh, behind the uh, underlying the, the model uh, statistically a1 is independent from a2 and a2 from a3 and from all of the others and they are identically distributed meaning that the random variable has a common distribution so all these numbers are coming from a common probability distribution but the realizations that is ex the number that is uh, obtained and used as a number that replaces a1 a no certain number of seconds for instance that is a that is a that that is coming from a certain probability distribution okay so let's talk about one probability distribution the uniform the uniform which is used to produce uniform random variables so let's take a look at that which is probably the simplest uh, in, s in many senses let us think of the time that goes between you sending up an email and the next email just like the previous uh, example so you have information to claim that no less than two minutes and no more than 15 minutes would pass between two consecutive uh, sent emails okay. that that's say for instance history and you know that it, it, you're sending emails uh, no sooner than two minutes and wouldn't end 15 minutes wouldn't go by without you uh, sending an e another email so it is safe to say that we can we can we can we can see that the the time that happens between two emails can be any number between 2 and 15 minutes so let's put it in a bag and let's just draw a number every time we need to produce that amount to say okay when the next email is going to be sent out so we produce a random number from a set of numbers but the uniform distribution is one in which all all of these numbers are equally likely that's what the uh, distribution says now you may say okay but um, it's not three minutes it, it may be three minutes and 30 seconds or between one email and the next one it could be four minutes and uh, eight seconds and so on well well let's just make that um, let's just make that um, set bigger and let's make it more granular so let's include not only two minutes but two minutes one second two minutes two seconds and so on so that would that would make things more accurate perhaps but the idea remains that for if we're talking about a uniform random variable then if the set of choices is this one just to put it in a simple way then any of these numbers would have an equal probability to be drawn and that probability would be 1 divided by 15 well I have already noticed a little bit of a problem because we don't actually have 15 numbers here so what would be more accurate yeah you guessed it 1 divided by 14 yep because there are 14 different numbers see 1 is not included 2 3 4 5 etc up to 15 is 14 different numbers each one is going to have 1 14th of probability to be drawn from a lottery that will be used by the simulator to to, ge to generate the next um, the next point in time when an email will be sent out. So that's the use of the uniform random variable here. Finally, these processes, the ones that we were talking about before, we're not only interested in the time that goes from one point to the next one. Sometimes we are interested on what is the amount of information that is coming on that email so what is the size of the email not all emails are equal so sometimes we have a size for one email and a different size for another email so here what I'm pointing at is that we have another probability issue 
and it is that the size of an email is not known and there is no reason why we should schedule known numbers to be used all over the simulation. We better use a way to generate random numbers from a probability distribution, for instance the uniform, that's the one that we learned today, and use it to say that the next email will be of a certain size that we don't know beforehand. It's something that we're gonna produce at the moment that we need it and that's what the simulation the simulator that does. So I hope that the the concept of random variable and probability distribution uh, at least the uniform distribution is understood so we can proceed with the next video. Thank you.